do not ask the viewer to subscribe to your YouTube channel near the beginning of your video before you've provided any value. That's the advice these days from YouTube experts, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't throw in some kind of call to action to get the viewer to hit that subscribe button. You just need to be a little more subtle, a little more subliminal about it. And I'm gonna show you how to do just that by creating an animated subscribe button overlay. Now, there are a number of sites online where you can buy one of these animated subscribe button overlays, but I'm gonna show you how to create one for free using a piece of software that comes bundled with every Mac, at least at the time of this recording. And that software is Apple Keynote. Let's jump in. All right, here we are in Apple Keynote. This is Keynote version 13.1 for your reference. And I have a project open with one slide and that slide contains an image. This is a frame of video I exported from an iMovie project, then dragged and dropped onto the slide. I'm using this image as a reference so I can line up my subscribe button properly on screen without a lot of guesswork. To export a frame of video from an iMovie project, you just Park the playhead on the frame of video you want to grab, either in the timeline or the media browser, then go up and select the Share menu. And from the pop-out menu, select Save Current Frame, and then follow the prompts. Back over here in Keynote, I'm going to zoom out of my slide a little bit to get a better view of everything. So the first thing we're going to do is create the background for our Subscribe button. So I'm going to go up to Keynote's top toolbar and select the Shape button. And from the basic shapes list, I'm going to select the rounded rectangle. I'll grab the rounded rectangle here and place it near the bottom left corner. Right about here is good. That's a good spot. Now I'm going to grab the right side handle here of the shape and click and drag out the side to stretch this shape into more of a rectangle. I'll click off the rectangle to see what it looks like without all the selection handles. The default rounding looks pretty good. Now, if you want to adjust the rounded corners of the rectangle, you select the rectangle, then go up to the top left corner and select and drag on this little green dot to adjust the rounding of the corners. A radius of 15 is good. All right, next I'm gonna change the color of the rectangle. With the rectangle selected, I'll go over to the properties panel and make sure the style button is selected. Now I could just select this red color in the shape style section, but I want a specific red color for my subscribe button. So I'm gonna go down to the color fill section and select the multicolor circle here, which brings up the color picker. Now I'm gonna select the sliders interface up here, and then from the sliders drop down menu, select RGB sliders. Then down here in the hex color number field, I'm just gonna enter the hex code for the red that I want. And hit enter. And my rectangle changes to red. Now that's just one way to pick a color in Keynote. There's a number of different ways you can do that. All right, let's add the subscribe text to the button. To do that, I'm simply going to double click on the rectangle and a cursor appears. I'll add the text, and it appears in a default color and font, but we can change that. I'll select the text, then over in the Properties panel, I'll switch over to the Text section, and down in the Font section from the drop-down menu, I'm going to select Roboto. Now, you may or may not have this font on your Mac. Pick from whatever you have available on your machine. I'll leave the font style set to Regular. Then using the font size control over here, I'll bump up the size of the text to 50 points. Finally, I'm gonna change the font color by selecting the color swatch beside text color. And from the pop-out menu, select the white swatch. And there's our subscribe button. Pretty boring as it stands. So we're gonna make it stand out using animation. I want my subscribe button to animate on screen. So I'll select the subscribe button. Then I'll go way up to the top right of the interface above the properties panel and select the animate button. Now by default, the build in button is selected, which is what I want. Build in controls how an object animates onto the slide. I'll select the add an effect button and I get this long list of build in animations to choose from. 
I'm going to go down to the Flip, Spin, and Scale section, and from this list, Highlight, Pop. I can preview the animation by selecting the Preview button beside it. That's what I want, so I will click it to select it. Now, each builder animation has settings you can adjust. For this particular animation, I'm going to use all the default settings. If you make changes, you can preview the changes by hitting this Preview button up here. All right, our subscribe button is popping on screen. Now here's where things get fancy. I'm gonna go back up to Keynote's top toolbar and select the Shape button again. This time, I'm going to the Symbols menu and selecting Arrow 10. I'll drag the arrow over to the Subscribe button, just to get a little closer. Now I'm gonna modify this arrow a bit. With the arrow selected, I'll go back over to the Properties panel and select the Style button. I'll go down to Color Fill and select the Color Swatch. And from the pop-out menu, select the Black Swatch, which fills the arrow with black. Then I'll go down to the Border section and select the menu. And from the menu, I'll select Line. In the Line Settings, I'll change the color to white. And I'll change the thickness of the line to three points. So this gives me a black arrow with a white outline. Looks like a pointer. Then I'm going to go over to the arrow on the slide here and hover over this corner point. Then press and hold the Command key. The pointer changes to this rotation tool. Holding down the Command key, I'll click and drag to rotate the arrow so it's pointing at the Subscribe button a little bit more. All right, I'm going to shrink the arrow a little bit by clicking and dragging on one of the corner points. That looks good. All right, I'm going to animate this arrow on screen the same way we brought the subscribe button on screen. With the arrow selected, I'll go over to the properties panel, and make sure the animate button is selected and make sure build in is selected. This time from the add an effect list, I'm going to select move in. In the move in settings, I'll change the duration to 0.6 seconds. I'll preview that. That looks good. From the Direction drop-down menu, I'll select bottom left to top right so the arrow comes in from the bottom corner toward the Subscribe button. And uncheck Bounce. I want the arrow coming in to a complete stop when it reaches the Subscribe button. All right, I'll leave everything else as it is for now. Now, when the arrow lands on the button, I want the button to react in some way. So to do that, I'll select the button. Then over in the Animate section of the Properties panel, I'll select the Action button. Actions are animations you add to objects that are already on the slide. From the Add an Effect menu, I'll go down to the bottom of the list and select Pulse. I'm only going to change one setting here. I'll reduce the number of pulses to one. All right, let's preview everything we have so far. So to do that, I'll go up to the top toolbar and select the Play button to play the slideshow, including all of our animations or builds. What the? Where are the animations? Not to worry. This is a very common issue when animating in Keynote. I'll hit Escape to get out of playback mode. Then I'll go way down here and select the Build Order button. That brings up the Build Order panel. Now you can see all of our animations or builds in order of appearance. I'll select the first animation or build, which is the Subscribe button popping on screen. Now take a look down here where it says Start. It's set to On Click at the moment, which means the build or animation will not start until I click on the slideshow in playback mode. Well, that's not going to work for a video. I need all of these animations to fire off on their own. So to do that, I'll change the Start setting from On Click to After Transition, which is essentially the automatic setting. When I do that, the Delay field becomes available, which means I can delay when the animation plays. I'm going to leave that at zero. I'm going to change all of the animations from On Click to Automatic here in the Build panel. So when I select the second build or animation, the arrow coming in, my choices are with Build 1 or after Build 1. Build 1 being the Build Above, which is the Subscribe button popping on screen. Now, I want the arrow to come on right after the button comes on. So I'll set this to 
after build one. And I'll leave the delay set to zero. I don't want a delay between the button coming on and the arrow coming on. All right, I'll do the same for the pulse action for the button. I'll set it to after build two, which is the arrow coming on and leave delay set to zero. All right, let's preview again. I'll go up and hit the play button. Now the animations play automatically one after the other. All right, almost done. I'm now going to animate these objects off the slide. Real simple. All right, I'll select the subscribe button first, then go back over to the properties panel, making sure I'm still in the animate section. This time I'll select build out. These effects take objects off the slide. This time I'll select move out. In the move out settings, I'll change duration to 0.5 seconds, direction to right to left. I'll leave bounce selected and leave everything else as is. Then I'll select the arrow pointer and in the animate section, switch over to build out. And from the list, I'll select move out. In the settings, I'll change duration to 0.5 seconds, direction to top right to bottom left. So basically moves out the way it came in. I'll uncheck bounce. I'll bring up the build order panel again to make sure the builds or animations I just added play automatically. I'll select the subscribe move out animation and change its start setting from on click to after build three, which is the pulsing action. But this time I will add a delay of one second so that the subscribe button stays on for a little bit before moving off the slide. I'll select the arrow move out animation and switch it from on click to with build four. This will move the arrow off the slide at the same time as the subscribe button moves off, which is build four. All right, let's preview to see what all of this looks like. I'll go up and hit the play button. Beautiful. That's the timing I want. All right, the final part of this process is turning our subscribe animation into a video that we can overlay onto other videos in applications like iMovie or Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro. Doing that requires a couple of steps. The first step is to give our subscribe animation a transparent background. To do that, I'll first select my reference still frame here and hit delete to delete it. Then making sure nothing is selected on the slide, I'll go over to the properties panel and switch over to the format section, then go down to the background section and under current fill, select the color fill menu and select no fill. This removes the background of the slide. Now make sure the swatch beside current fill is white with a red slash through it. That's how you confirm there's no slide background. Now we can export this animation as a video with a transparent background. So I'll go up to file, export to movie. In the movie export settings, I'll leave playback set to self playing, slides set to all since we only have one slide. We can skip over this section. Our events play automatically, not on click. For resolution, I'm going to make sure it's set to custom and make sure it's set to 4K resolution, which is 3840 by 2160 pixels. This will give me maximum resolution for my export, which will help keep things looking sharp. I'll leave frame rate at 30 frames per second. For compression type, I'm going to use Apple ProRes 4444. This will give me the least compressed, highest quality possible while at the same time preserving transparency. Now keep in mind, Apple ProRes 4444 creates very large file sizes. That's not a big deal in this situation since our animation is only a handful of seconds long. Make sure export with transparent backgrounds is checked. Then hit save to label and export the file. Over here in iMovie, I'm gonna drag in the exported keynote video and place it on the timeline above the main video track in cutaway mode and hit play animated subscribe button overlays but i'm going to show you how to create and there's our animated subscribe button overlay now that's just a basic example of what you can do with keynote animation you could 
add more animations to that overlay. Play with the fonts, the colors. You could even add a sound effect to it if you wanted to. And you can use Keynote for more than just animated subscribe buttons. You can create animated watermarks, lower third title text, and more. For another cool example of what you can create with Apple Keynote, have a look at this video on my channel.